So good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Marco Mattiello, and I'm, as Enzo said, I'm representing the champions. So I'm, <laughs> I'm really proud of it. Um, so Contarina is a, is a waste management company. Uh, we, are, we are located uh, in the northeastern part of, uh, of Italy, in the, in the Veneto region. Um, we are serving uh, 50 municipalities for more than uh, half a million inhabitants, uh, about uh, 260,000 uh, um, users. Uh, and as you can see, uh, we serve different co geographical contests, I mean, from city center um, to outlying areas and urban centers. So the territory we are serving is, is quite different. Uh, I need to give you a couple of key elements before, uh, before proceeding and explaining uh, deeper how the system works. The first key element is that uh, um, the, the stakeholders uh, need uh, to be involved at 100%. You need to share the, the goals, the objective uh, uh, with everyone. I mean, having 50 municipalities, uh, that means 50 mayors, that means uh, different parties, that means that in Italy, as also in Bulgaria and many other countries, uh, probably we are the best in fighting uh, and uh, having different ideas. Um, so. It's, it's not easy, it's not easy, but it's absolutely necessary because only, only sharing uh, the, the ideas and the goals you want to reach and uh, having uh, the, same, the same goal can uh, bring you to, to achieve uh, the results uh, I'm going to show you. Uh, just an idea on... Uh, our, our approach, as you can see in uh, uh, the Italian law has, the, has provided to, to reach the 65% uh, of recycling rate by, by 2012. And uh, quite before, uh, it was 2000, 2005, uh, uh, we set a goal to reach the 80% uh, in 2008. Uh, so we were um, kind of uh, looking for the future. And another key element uh, that, that uh, Enzo and Jean-Marc already uh, said before, uh, you cannot achieve uh, this kind of results uh, uh, if uh, you have uh, incinerators uh, and landfills uh, in the territory. So we are not... Uh, incinerating our, um, our waste. In the province of Treviso, the use of landfills is banned. Uh, so this is uh, the territory, the contest where, where we work. Uh, I think it's also quite important on having a, a systemic approach on, uh, on eco-innovation. Uh, Eco-innovation is not only investing a uh, million of euros in, uh, in technologies, uh, but it's also investing on, on people. That is quite cheaper compared to the, to the technologies. Investing on people means mainly that uh, you have a long-term investment compared to the technologies with a short, uh, mid-term investment. That means if you're investing on people, on citizens today, you don't need to invest anymore a lot of time and a lot of money on adults because they already trained uh, how to behave. So the kids, uh, the young generation today, perfectly knows how to behave tomorrow. The technology, the money you spend today in five, 10 years, uh, needs to be, by again, to be renewed. And this is why we are uh, doing a thousand of uh, training sessions 
in all the schools in our in our territory from the 6 to the 15 uh, years old uh, we have a lot of different kind of of training session dedicated to to the young generation and it's also extremely important to have a, to have a different approach compared to the to the traditional companies i mean it's not only having the system working and sending the bill uh, every three months or every, or every six months, but you absolutely need to have, uh, let's say, a contact, I mean, with, uh, with the citizens through social medias, uh, through the journal we send uh, every three months to our citizens, to our users, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and so on. This is and, and replying and answering to their questions, to their doubts. Uh, we have also the eco desk where people can come and ask if they have any doubt, uh, if they don't know how to manage their waste. This is why our approach is not anymore a business to business approach or a business to, <clears throat> to, to consumer to customer approach, but it's human to human. This is extremely important. Uh, you need to have a constant uh, contact uh, and a human approach uh, with the citizens, with your users. And of course the responsibility, Enzo already explained perfectly uh, the importance of responsibility. And the citizens uh, really have uh, an important role. I mean, I'm talking as Contarina, as a company, but I'm also talking as a uh, 500,000 inhabitants, citizens, that without them, we cannot reach uh, these results because they have a very important role as a responsibility. They need to know exactly what is necessary to do. Of course, we have a curbside collection, a door-to-door -door collection, so with different beans. Uh, uh, we have also different uh, size of beans uh, depending on uh, where people live. I mean, if they live in a condo, uh, they can ask for smaller beans, uh, like, like these ones. If they have a bigger house, uh, they have the big one. And uh, we collect waste uh, of different uh, type of waste, of course, the organic waste, uh, the residual, the glass, plastic and can, papers, and they also uh, could ask for uh, for a green bean uh, if they have a, if they have a garden. Uh, together with the curbside collection, of course, the the pay as you throw fee is uh, is necessary. Uh, the pay as you throw fee is based mainly on uh, sixty percent uh, of um, of fixed fee that is based uh, on the number of household. So as many people, citizens live in a family, uh, they have a different number of the residual waste uh, uh, removed uh, beans, plus a 40% uh, of variable fee. The variable fee is based on the number of residual waste bean removals, uh, there is a 30% discount uh, for uh, home composting. Of course, the citizens, if they have a garden, if they have room, they can ask for the special bean for home composting. And there is a minimum fixed quota uh, for, the, for the green bean. Um, so these numbers are, of course, related uh, to the Italian uh, uh, cost of life, so maybe uh, here in Bulgaria or in other countries could, could appear uh, expensive. But I uh, just want to show you the difference uh, of the, the management cost of, the, um, of Contarina related uh, to the north and the central and the southern Italy and the national Italian average. So it's quite lower. Also, also here, the, uh, the average of household, the cost. Uh, this is quite complicated, but uh, it's just to show you the, uh, 
the, the, the red line is uh, uh, the, the national cost of waste management uh, at the national level. So it grew up in uh, 13 years of 92%. Uh, as you can see, the green line uh, is the cost uh, of Contarina. So in 13 years, the cost of management uh, grew up only for 14%. And this is, of course, uh, well, it's a circular economy slide. Uh, the most important part uh, is there in the middle, uh, where Enz already perfectly explained uh, what is no recyclable uh, needs to be recycled. So it's, uh, it, let's say it's, it's a mistake uh, by the producers. So we need to work with producers in order to uh, delay that part uh, and reach the, uh, the circular economy, the, the recyclable circle uh, at 100%. Uh, about residual waste, uh, uh, we are upgrading uh, our, our plant. Uh, just want to tell you one thing before. Uh, the results we are obtaining uh, are obtained without any particular or ultra-modern technology. I mean, we have uh, uh, standard technologies for uh, for residual waste, but also for organic and so on. So don't think that we are investing uh, hundreds of millions of euros in, uh, in such a technologies, but uh, it's, all the, it's all the system that is bringing these, these results. <clears throat> so with the upgrade of our, of our uh, residual waste, uh, we think that we can, uh, we can reach uh, I mean, this is the, in the middle is the, the actual situation and uh, the big one is the future where we think that we can take uh, from the residual waste uh, a good part of organic, plastic, uh, metals and paper together from, from our residual waste. And part of this residual waste, this is the, the organic, uh, from the organic uh, we are creating uh, a very good quality of, uh, of biocompost. And this is the results uh, we achieved. So today we are at 84.5% compared to the national data of uh, 42. Uh, you can see that when we introduced the pay as you trophy, uh, the percentage rise. Um, the regional one and the Veneto region is one of the highest percentage of, of recycling in Italy is a 63. And this is the, what we obtain with, uh, with the production of residual waste. We are at 55 kilograms per inhabitant per year compared to the 281 in Italy and the 163 in the, in the Veneto region. Um, another imp very important thing, especially during uh, these years uh, with the <clears throat> economical crisis, is that uh, uh, we were able during this year to raise the number of employees uh, in, uh, in Contarina, while in Italy, but also, of course, in other countries, uh, uh, we are facing a uh, uh, huge problem of unemployment. And this is due uh, because, uh, and I bring you the example of, of Treviso. Treviso is the capital city of, uh, the province of Treviso, of course, so it's the biggest city that we serve its 80,000 inhabitants. Uh, they joined Contarina in, in 2013. They had a classical street collection. And uh, because of our method uh, needs uh, more workers, because of course uh, uh, the, the, the collection system uh, is different. So we were able to rise the number of employees 
from 58 uh, to 84 only for the city of Treviso, keeping uh, the management costs equal. So, as, uh, as also Enzo said, uh, uh, the circular economy is, is creating jobs, uh, green jobs. Uh, this is the concrete example. It creates jobs. And Treviso, from the 52% of recycling rate uh, with the traditional street collection, in uh, one, and, one year and a few months, uh, they reach the 85 percent. Uh, we have a, a new plant. Uh, this is the technological, as I said, uh, it's a little bit uh, <laughs> more technological than the usual. Um, you know, the, in the residual waste, we have more or less 28 percent of uh, absorbent hygiene products, uh, AHP. And <coughs> together with Fatter, it's an Italian company that produced the pumpers. Uh, we participated to a European project. We have a pilot plant uh, in, uh, in Contarina to recycle uh, the, um, the diapers. It's, uh, it will start work, I mean, we will start the testing phase next week. And uh, we hope to, to decrease uh, the amount of, of residual waste uh, with this plant, uh, with this new technology. The method could also be applied not only in the, in the cities. Uh, we have a project ongoing with the uh, Aeroporti di Roma. Yeah. So we applied our method, uh, the curbside collection, the pay as trophy, uh, in the airport. So for the different shops and restaurants uh, in, the, in the airport, they pay as much as they create waste. And the goal is to reach the 85% uh, in 2015 uh, and to be the airport in the world with the highest standard of recycling rate. And this is how uh, we, there was, there was a slide at the beginning, uh, just to show you how we, we handle to put all the different pieces of the puzzle together. Um, now, talking about uh, zero waste, we have a goal by 2022. And the goal is to reach the 96.7% of recycled waste and 10 kilograms uh, per inhabitant uh, per year of residual waste. That means uh, minus 80% of the situation we have, uh, we have today. Uh, that's all. I think I managed uh, 20 minutes. And if you have any questions, thank you.